Hey, welcome back to 11's Dirt Life. Today we're gonna to do a walk around video. I have my beautiful wife, Michelle, helping me out with this. And uh, we are actually excited about this because this is our new... LJ. LJ, <laughs> so we're gonna, we um, kind of weren't planning on buying an LJ, weren't planning on buying any vehicles. And uh, as a lot of you know, the LJ is very sought after, super desirable. And so I'm always looking at stuff like that online. And this one popped up, we knew the owner. Uh, I knew how clean it was. I knew how well maintained it was. I showed it to Michelle and she basically, within a few minutes of looking at it, was like, why don't, why aren't we buying this? So that's kind of what happened and um, we, we got it. So we're gonna do, we're excited. We're gonna show you, this walk around is how we bought it. We haven't done anything to it yet. You know how we are, we're gonna modify it, but um, it's ready to go, I think, as far as trail ready uh, is concerned. It looks legit. So we're gonna do a quick walk around. You wanna do the interior and maybe I'll do the exterior? That works. All right, so I'm gonna grab the camera. We'll have Michelle kind of walk you through what's going on inside of the Jeep and then we'll hand over the camera and I'll kind of talk about what's going on outside the Jeep. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Actually, let's start off with a full on panned out view of the Jeep so everyone can see what we're talking about here. So here it is, 05 LJ, four liter, 160 something thousand miles on it. Um, Obviously a lot of stuff has been changed, but uh, here's how it looks. We, we're kind of undecided on a name right now. We're going back and forth on a few names. So maybe we'll have that name figured out before we drop the video. Uh, we'll put that in the title if we do so. Anyhow, all right. So I guess let's start with inside here. We've got the PRP uh, seats and PRP harnesses, five point har harnesses here in the front. And then the back has the Corbo seat cover for the kiddos. Um, the, there's a six switch panel down here. Get in there and look at that real quick. We're not sure what that, who makes that quite yet. We got to look into that, but yeah, it's a six switch panel for lights and stuff like that. And then over on this side, there's the, um, ARB front and rear lockers and air compressor switches. And then this is a PRP steering wheel. It has the Genrite quick release. Is that what it's called? Yeah, like quick disconnect, quick release. <laughs> quick I'm not exactly disconnect. sure, but you take the wheel off uh, if you want to. So anti-theft device type deal, kind of cool. Yep. Um, up here, we've got the Skosh mirrors and we'll probably go ahead and get a Skosh rear view mirror that mounts on this poison spider cage. Let me get back and pan out on that cage real quick because that's a cool feature we have. So I think that's, uh, you know, something nice to have on it already. Just We're going to have to add um, a couple Skosh cell phone mounts and a rugged radio, GMRS, probably eventually. Yeah, we, we run the ruggeds and then like Michelle said, probably do something on the dash bar up here. We already have a, a clamp there, so we'll get some sort of phone mount. You know, you got to have a phone mount going on. It does have um, several like aftermarket speakers, tower speakers back here in the back. We're not quite sure exactly what they are, but um, it doesn't really matter for wheeling. We don't even listen to music when we're on the trail. <laughs> We don't. Let We're one of the few. The yeah, we like to hear the Jeep moving and working and, and talking and just enjoying being outside. So pretty cool. Yeah, we were really happy with the way the interior setup was. Um, the seats are super comfy, I think. Uh, harnesses aren't bad. We've got harnesses in the JL, so we're used to that. So anything else on the interior that we're missing that you can think of, honey? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Let me take over the camera and you talk about the exterior. All right. You know, I like to talk. Okay this so um, one of the cool things about this that we were excited about was it we have the full doors and the factory half doors so the the owner prior to us had had the generate aluminum half doors on it uh, he found a guy that wanted to trade out for the actual uh, mopar half door so we've got the full-on mopar half door which is nice uh, nice and sturdy and rugged we like the generate doors too so we, we would have been happy either way but um, as you can see, the entire exterior, with the exception of this panel here, is covered with armor. So, uh, poison spider corner armor in the rear uh, with the poison spider uh, rock slider rocker. So, that's all integrated together. Uh, we've got the panel here. You can see all this is all armor on top of the actual uh, body panel here. This, I'm not sure who this is. Um, it's either poison spider or generite. I couldn't find a plate from poison spider, so it might be generite, but I'm assuming since they made this, they probably had that at some point as well. Um, we've got the Poison Spider Highline Fender here. You can hear my five-year-old coughing in the background. Quentin, you want to say hi to everybody? What's that, buddy? Gobble, gobble. All right. That's, that's <laughs> what you get from a five-year-old. You never know what to expect. Um, so, Poison Spider Fender here. Poison Spider Inner Fender, I believe. Um, while we're on the side of the Jeep, maybe we can talk about wheels and tires. 
So we've got the spider lock bead locks with the Nitto trail grappler. These are 37, uh, 1250, um, 17 inch wheel. So I've run this tire before. It's a great tire. I really like this tire. I ran this on my JK for a long time. Um, so it's in great condition, but us being heard, uh, you know, part of the Milestar, factory Milestar team will probably throw a set of Milestar Patagonies on here. Haven't decided if we're gonna do a 38 or a 37 and or if we're gonna do an MTO2 or a black label. So uh, that'll be something we'll probably change down the road for no other reason than the fact that, you know, we um, were with Milestar and we love their tires. So this is a great tire as well. Uh, also want to switch out the wheels. This is super heavy. This is actually a really heavy wheel and tire combination. So by going to the Milestar Patagonia and by going to a lighter wheel, maybe the KMC Grenade, um, we'll lighten the load of that of that tire and wheel combination significantly. Even if we went up to a 38, that tire is still lighter than this 37 uh, Nitto, just you know, due to out exterior carcass and things like that. So just kind of thinking out loud about maybe some stuff we're gonna do down the line. We'll go ahead and transition over to the front. Uh, you can see this is one of the cool things. This is the Genrite hood. So this is their uh, heat reducing, I think it's a high line or heat reducing hood. Uh, forgive me, I don't know all of the TJ, LJ, product part names yet we're kind of new to the market so we're, just, we're still figuring stuff out as we go um, and then we've got JW speaker headlights uh, we've got some lights on the a pillar right? they're just Amazon specials I believe we already have we're already lined up we got some KC's that'll be going on there uh, same here this is a Amazon light bar we'll be replacing that with the KC flex bar um, bumper as far as the bumper is concerned moto built bumper um, with the poison spider fair lead we have a Factor 55 Pro Link here. I have an extra flat link lying around, so I'll probably throw that on there, flat link E. Um, I guess you can see here we've got, maybe we'll get into suspension while we're on this side of the Jeep here. We're running the Anti-Rock on the front. This is the Rock Jock uh, Anti-Rock with the aluminum arms. Um, suspension is all metal cloak. Um, so we've got the metal cloak coil. So it looks like it's a triple rate. You can see how the coils are stacked here. Uh, metal cloak bump stops, upper and lower. These are the Metal Cloak Rock Sport shocks. Um, so we've never run uh, the Metal Cloak setup before, so we'll, we'll be interested to, to see how that works. I do have, um, honey, plug your ears. I do have the 2.5 coilovers that I took off my JL when I went to the ORI struts sitting in the garage. So maybe we'll throw those on here. That might be some kind of a fun project to do, weld in the towers and do all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, we were planning on selling those, but who knows, you know? Um, oh, let's maybe get underneath here and I can get through some cool stuff. So you can see here we got the PSC. So this has full PSC hydraulic steering assist. Um, it is one of the things I need to track down. It's got a little bit of a leak. You can see we're dropping a little drips here. So that's the one thing that I know I need to work on. That's when I bought it. He told me about it. Um, I believe this is the TerraFlex uh, high steer uh, tie rod and drag link. So it eliminates the, the connected tie rod and drag link. And then it raises the, you know, the mount on the drag link here off the knuckle. So we have that nice, uh, plane with the track bar, everything's in line and we have the high steer, um, you know, getting everything up and out of the way. Axles are 44 G two forty fours, I believe with G two internals, um, geared at 488. So we have an ARB locker in there. You can see the ARB line running through there. Um, probably going to maybe throw some sea gussets on there and, and a truss if we decide to keep these axles on. Um, so that would be just some axle reinforcement. Uh, I, I believe there's chromolys on there already, so we're good there. Um, I want to show you talking about that metal cloak system, something interesting that I learned about this system. I've heard about it before, but I didn't really know how it worked. It's called the lock and load. So it is a um, long arm, four link front, you know, so all four upper, you know, two upper, two lower control arms uh, connection points. But what this does is uh, it allows you, honey, if you wanna get in here real quick, I'm gonna show. You can see this, this, this right here. Um, you basically back off this jam nut, turn the collar or this part of the control arm all the way down and it, it, it unlocks it or it locks it. Uh, you can lock it and unlock it and essentially making it a three link and or a four link. So when you're off-roading, you can turn it into a three link to get all that extra travel and articulation out of it. When you're on the highway, you can lock it back up as a four link and that allows you to have um, you know better handling and, and things like that. So pretty cool. Um, we'll see how it works. I, I have no experience with it. So um, I'll report back on how we like it, if we like it, if we don't. But from what I've heard, it works really well. Um, so you can see the full metal cloak long arm with the metal cloak um, belly there for the arms. I haven't measured the wheelbase on this yet, so I'll, I'll probably get some measurements on that to see how that how that goes, what kind of wheelbase we're working with. But one of the great things about the LJ, as you know, is the longer wheelbase, kind of the precursor to the four-door JKs. Um, so really cool with 
that. I'm not sure about exhaust. I think we have aftermarket exhaust. These are things that he, you know, the guy that we bought it off didn't know everything because he bought it and somebody else as well. Um, drive lines, I haven't even gotten under there to see what the drive lines are, but they are 1310 U-joint style drive lines, so they're aftermarket drive lines there. I want to show you one of the things that we want to address um, with the rear. So by pushing the axle back with the with the long arms, you can see the coil bow is is significant. So um, what we will either do is put the coilovers on, so weld in towers and coil over, which would eliminate that, or Genrite makes a, uh, we would cut the coil bucket, this piece out, Genrite makes a, a, another piece that moves it back and level, and it helps you level out that coil so the coil's not so bowed. Um, so one of those two options um, would be what we'd be doing going forward. And again, oh, let's get to the rear because we have some stuff on the rear to talk about as well. There's like so much stuff, you know, it's hard to keep track of it all. I probably will miss a couple things. Um, brand new metal cloak gas tank skid. So that has zero scratches on it. Um, brand new moto built rear bumper, uh, tailgate. So there was no tailgate armor. So he added the tailgate armor and then the, you know, the, the plate down there. Um, so I think that's covering, oh, let's get, you know, let's go under the hood as well too. I didn't plan this whole thing out. I just kind of been going through it as we walk through. Um, so these are, I believe they're the Drake hood latches. So you, you push the button here to get it to release, pull the pin out, push the button to get it to release, pull the pin out, and then goes up, goes up. Okay, so we don't have anything to hold it up, so I'm gonna hold it up with my hand. Um, this is a three row, brand new three row aluminum radiator. Uh, those of you that have the TJ, LJ know that these things typically tend to run hot. So this is a brand new, uh, radiator hopefully to help out with that looks like we have a Thor intake uh, with the dust shield on it which is great uh, here you can see the ARB high output compressor which we would use for um, the lockers and could use for the tires it's got the chuck on it but we have uh, you know we're partners with power tanks so we'll definitely be adding a power tank to the mix on this you can see here the PSC uh, reservoir um, we have an Optima brand new Optima yellow top over there so that's really nice and then as far as anything else on the engine is concerned that's about everything I know of uh, it runs super strong this thing is is ready I mean it's trail ready we could take it to the Rubicon I think if we wanted to and run it no problem as long as I get a look at that um, PSC here's what we got switch panel I'm trying to see why I got it open it just says switch panel so I don't know who makes that switch panel but it's some sort of aftermarket company but it works for us currently so um, I think that's about it as far as the, uh, oh, this mini belt winch, 10,000 pound synthetic line winch. Uh, I don't necessarily see a need to change that. I, you know, typically I run worn on everything. I prefer worn, but uh, we want to kind of tackle things here that are uh, higher priority first. So that's probably something we'll keep on there for a while. Um, headlights, our JW speaker, I might have mentioned that. We'll probably swap those out for some KCs. And then, I don't know, is there anything else you can think of we should add to it, honey? I don't know, we just need to get it on a trail. We need to get it on a trail. So, and that's that being said, here, I'm gonna put this camera down real quick for both of us to talk again. That being said, uh, one of the reasons why we, we wanted to swoop this up was, was to allow you to have more time behind the wheel, right? Because, I mean, you can talk with the Gladiator, Gladiator is not really built for crawling, which is what we like to do with our friends. So right. this will be a better um, trail rig for me. And won't be so nervous about messing it up. <laughs> I know it's hard to have a brand new nice rig out on the trail and then and then feel like this thing, we don't want to mess this up either, but this is, this is built for wheeling. It's got, it's already got dents and scratches. It's already got, uh, you know, trail marks on it. And it's kind of ready to go. So we won't feel so bad if we put a little ding in it and throw some armor on the side. And your Gladiator is fully capable of doing all that stuff. We just didn't build it for that. It's more of, you know, uh, your car and, you know, we can take it off road, but we're not trying to do, you know, Ford Ice or probably even Rubicon and something like that. Right. Uh, we'll do some of the trails up here locally. So um, let me know in the comments if you're an LJ or a TJ guy or just a Jeep guy and you have any suggestions on things that we should do or things that we should know about. Uh, oh, one of the things I did, that reminds me, one of the things I didn't touch on is the transfer case. So this was not a Rubicon to start. It was a Sport or Unlimited or whatever they called them back then. Um, and it has the lower transfer or the higher transfer case ratio. So uh, I, to my understanding, it has the Terra low in there, which reduces the transfer case down to a Ford one, essentially a Rubicon case. But um, in looking into it, they don't sell those anymore because they were having problems with transfer case issues and stuff like that. So if you know anything about that, let me know. Uh, we definitely don't want to grenade the transfer case on the trail. 
Um, we would probably look to put a 401 case into it if we could, or if someone has suggestions on what to do, or just things that we should know about on the TJ or LJ platform, I would greatly appreciate any input. Uh, you can always message me or uh, comment below. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Anything else you want to add? Nope, that's it. Thanks, guys.